Perfect. So uh, now we we have covered uh, you know basics or uh, you know basics of NetSuite. How do you navigate and all that? Now yes. coming to the part, uh, uh, the actual course content is uh, first thing uh, uh, is Suite Script. So uh, you know, let's say what is Suite Script? <clears throat> first thing. So uh, Suite Script is uh, is a scripting language which is uh, based on JavaScript. but it is uh, you know uh, created uh, on top of that and then uh, you know use uh, you know being used being uh, uh, designed or uh, designed in such a way that you have certain apis available you use those apis and then you know uh, build your own logic so this is okay. called suite script right uh, this is not javascript this is uh, netsuite's own scripting language called suite script now suite script has uh, uh, three different versions as of now So you have one dot o, two dot o, and two point one is recently released. So uh, these are two uh, three different versions. What we are going to focus as part of this course is two dot o primarily, uh, and because one dot o is anyway is going to end in some time. But uh, on time to time, I'll give you uh, some pointers like what is the difference? How do you use that in one dot o? Let's say if you're writing a piece of code, you know if you want to understand how do you do it in one dot o, I'll, I'll talk about that definitely. Okay. okay. So uh, this is Suite Script, right? And then Suite Script is primarily categorized into two things. One is client-side script, and second is server-side script, right? So client-side scripts are the ones, uh, you know, as the name uh, itself uh, specifies, right? These are the ones which will execute on the client side or the browser level, right? So if you, as a as a user, working on a form or working on a record, and when you know when you have deployed a client script, it will it will trigger on your browser level and it will show you. It will perform all the logic. It will perform all that validation on the browser level itself. And then you okay. have server side scripts. The these are the type of scripts which actually actually executes or triggers on the server side. You know, when okay. when the request goes to the server, that's when the uh, that's when the entire uh, you know execution happens. Okay. Okay. Uh, so uh, client side script. Uh, I mean, it's only one script, which is client script. And on the server side, we have the different category of scripts. We have user event script. We have uh, Uh, sweet late scheduled um, uh, rest late whatever we we are going to talk about right primarily uh, or, uh, and then second thing uh, once you deploy it here right see uh, let's say client script right so if you see here the type itself shows shows as a client so you remember when when we uh, you know select the script name and then click try to create a script record like try to create this record and so it is itself identifies what type it is right yes yes that is definitely that is because uh, it identifies based on the functions you have defined in the script uh -huh. so these are all the functions which are there in client script Okay. Okay. Page in save record. Right. Yes. Okay. And in this script, what you are using is this page in it only. Uh huh. That also it identifies as soon as you create create this record because okay. in the in the script definition, if you see here, we have only used page in it here. Yes. 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 Right. And the and the at the end we have mapped it to page in it function. So we have you we are only using page in it. So as soon as you create uh, or upload this script and try to create the script record. Now, see it identifies what function are being used, what type it, what script type it is, what API version it is, and based on that, you will see. Now, yes. if you want to see what all scripts are there in NetSuite, it has all this type segregation also. So you can see all these, uh, you know, by clicking on any category, you can see what script, uh, like what all suite lists are there. Like you see, what these are all the suite lists which are there in uh, already in instance. then you have different api versions also so i'm showing only 2.0 right now okay. and then if there are anything created from bundle or directly so let's say if i say none which means these are the ones which are created directly or not through a bundle uh. right and then you can by clicking on deployment you can go to the deployment record also okay okay so this is how you will segregate but as a w write a piece of code obviously you will understand uh because every script has a different different syntax and different functions and every script type has their own usage it's not like you can um, 
um you know you can use uh, uh i mean any problem you can solve through multiple solutions i understand but there will be one optimized optimal solution right one optimized solution uh where you need to reuse the right script for example if you have to do a mass uh, or a, or a huge data update right if there are this a high volume of records and then you have to perform some activity on that uh, you know that those number of records then you'll go with schedule script or map map reduce script for example right so that's how that's how you uh, segregate or that's how you utilize different scripts based on your business need and based on the problem statement uh and every script has their own functionality and their own use yeah. okay yeah so yes like it is how to identify the if it's like you said that so from uh, upload the lot of uh, records or for you use for scheduled script right so for the client script um if you suppose if anyone give any um no task anything so how to identify the okay this will be used for the client okay now that as a developer is your responsibility what script type you will see i'm i'm talking about a real time scenario let's say you get a problem statement or you get a you get a task basically yes. you get a problem yes. statement let's say you have to do this activity now yes. as a developer it's your responsibility to identify which script and which function will be the right function or right script to use in this particular problem okay okay now i know this is being your first uh, being your first session i i, I mean this is a little overwhelming i know that but uh, you will understand that is okay. my task for you to that is my task for you uh, you know um, to make you understand this obviously okay. by end of yeah. this course you will be confident and clear enough that you understand the differences you understand and uh, do you understand what uh, script is used in which scenarios and all that right so okay, that's okay. that's my task obviously that's the course about <laughs> so uh, okay, you don't okay. worry yeah but the but uh, honestly speaking when you understand this thing that which script to use what function to use and what will be the right solution for this a best solution for this once you understand that you are you are done like you the, that's it writing writing a piece of code is is not something which will which which will be tricky i understand initially it will be challenging because you have limited knowledge and you will you know eventually explore all the uh, you know all the apis all the types and everything obviously you, it will be learn there is a learning curve with everybody right so you learn yes. and then you you'll be confident in writing a script but when you get a problem statement and there's nobody to tell you okay? yes yes there's nobody to tell you what script to use and all that then based on your understanding if you have to make a decision and then come up with a solution that's the part where it it is most most challenging right you have to understand the problem come up with the best solution make sure your existing system is not hampered so there are two cases right you you if you are working on an implementation project that's a fresh system you can you have little bit luxury to mess mess around with us right when i say mess around like if you de- if you make a mistake there, there is still an option because that pr- system is all not live in production already but if you are working on an existing system uh, let's say if you are working on an enhancement uh, on top of an existing system that's that's when the that's when there is a risk if you develop something new if you deploy it in production it should not hamper your existing production functionality correct so that is where you have to be con- clear enough to choose the right solution to build the right solution and then uh, make sure that your existing system is not hampered yes now, yes uh, let's say on the help portal uh first thing okay so uh, so you have already you have certain libraries you can create your own libraries also right and then yes. uh, on under libraries you have some some sort of functions which are predefined and you can utilize yes. them that's yes, a, that's yes. any programming yes. yes yeah that's standard for any programming language right yes so yes. similarly in netsuit also you have different libraries available okay this is called as module okay in netsuit world we call it module now there are different modules available to perform some activities and under each module there are different different apis available okay, okay. yeah this is the entire suite script honestly speaking there are 
you know tons of modules and every module has different different apis available and this is all you have to use when you write a suite script let's say if you need to create a record you have record module under record module you have record dot create api that is used to create a record correct okay. if you want to yeah. save a record under the same module you have record dot save api and you have to use that api to save a record understood yes, so let's let's say i mean the module names are generally n slash record that is how netsheet record mod netsheet module names are defined okay okay yeah so you have this n slash record right now under this module you will have uh, different uh, let's say if i go to the module tab itself so you see under modules they, these are the number of modules which are available in netsheet right okay you got it so yes, every yes. module has different functionality so it's all let's functional. say record module is to yeah record module is used for uh, record creation deletion save uh, insert submit field update field anything right yes, yes. So then you have uh, let's say run time run time is to get all the run time related information like user okay. information role information uh, when you're running a script then you have search modules to define any searches like if you want to build a search within a script to perform some task you have to you have to use a lookup field api and all that that's when okay. you use a search module then similarly you have sftp module if you using an sftp uh, like if you are creating an sftp connection to create a connection to uh, upload a file to save uh, to uh, disconnect create connection all that you use sftp module okay then you have task module if you want to create any task in the script task can be uh, any task like if you want to perform let's say if you want to do a csv import within a script so that will mm -hmm. be used that will be done using a task module basically okay. you're you're creating a task task is nothing but to perform csv import right yes similarly you have uh, ui server widget this is to create a form if you want to create your own custom form using a script that is uh, that this is the module you use so then you have xml information xml related function of apis under xml module and then you have file related all the apis under file module if you want to create a file you have to you want to upload it in a particular folder if you want to download an existing file all that right then you have email module if you want to send an email uh then you use the email module if you want to do something with the currency then you have currency module so like that there are all these modules available and under every module you have different different apis clear okay. yeah clear so let's say n flash record module api n flash record module then you have n flash record module members right these are all the objects and then method methods are nothing but apis okay so you have record dot attach okay. you have record dot copy you have record dot create you have record dot delete uh, you have record dot detach record dot load record dot submit fields record dot transform transform is in when you want to transform one record into another record let's say you want to transform a sales order into invoice okay okay that is transform api transform a record see you transform a record from one type to another type that is why you use transform api okay then you have all these uh, methods available understood so similarly yes, like this is your record module now you understood about modules and uh, apis now right yes, any yes, questions yes. no 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 just clear about and, this right so initially yeah. when you start working on on feed script right you will not obviously you will not remember every single module and api right so you yes, come yes. to you go to help portal and look for the right module and api here and then you get the syntax and that syntax so let's say if i click on record dot uh, let's say create right record dot create it will show you all the information like what all parameters okay what are the general general error you get and then you have a code snippet okay so this is how you use record dot create record dot create has to three parameters you have type you have is dynamic and then you have default values if you are providing any okay, okay. yeah so you can come to any api and look for the syntax and then you can utilize accordingly in your script so initially 
uh, obviously you will not remember any of these APIs and their syntax. So you can come to help portal. You can look for it. So we can search then, it. Yes. Yeah. Correct. Yes, but yes, eventually when you start working on it, you will easily uh, remember things like basic APIs like record.create or get value and all that. You will easily remember because you have used, you're using it continuously, right? Yeah. But if there's something new, obviously you can come here and look for it. Okay. okay. So this is, uh, you know, this is all about your sweet script API. How do you use help portal for sweet script API? Okay. Your uh, scripting, uh, you know, information and templates, everything is available here, right? Now, yes. one last thing I'm going to cover and then we're going to end this session here. Okay. Is uh, governance. Okay. Okay. So what governance is? Now, to build this entire thing, and since you understand that it is in cloud and there is a you know there's a space constraint and everything and execution limitation, to to build it in an optimized way, like if you are working on script, and to use it in an optimized way. Okay, uh, Netsuite has come up with this concept of uh, governance. So every API function or every API you use. Uh, will have their own governance usage. So governance, consider it as a, I mean, uh, consider it as a limit uses sort of a thing. Like you, um, you remember with the space, space allocation function concept, right? Yes, yes, yes. Correct. In any programming language, like yeah, space allocation. Okay, fine, consider fine. governance as last. Like, let's say API, if we use uh, record.create API, it's going to consume 20 units from your space, for example. Okay. Okay. Like consider it that way. That is called governance in Nachi okay, contact. Fine. So okay. every API you use has a governance usage. Like record.create has 20. Record.submit field also has 20. Record. Uh, so if, I, if you go to any API here, it will show you governance uses also. See? So governance, sorry, record.create has 10. So on the governance transaction is 10 units. If you are creating a custom record, it is 20, two units, any other record type, it is five units. Okay. So let's say 10 units. If you're creating a sales order, for example, so if you're creating a sales order, 10 units, and then you save it, save also has 20 units. Now consider a scenario. <coughs> what you need to do, you need so to- So we can't, yeah, the governance is, uh, yes. Sorry, go, go, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, and if the governance like said limits. So if we record the 10 units, so it can no, it's uh... not a limit. It's it's a uses uses information. Let's say uh, hypothetically, I'm saying let's say you have 500 units with you. Okay. I'm, I'm talking in a very layman's term. Okay. Let's say you have 500 units with you. Now, if you use record dot create, it's going to take 10 units from it. So now you have four four ninety left. Correct. So this is nothing but a, you can consider it as space allocation or a space uh, memory allocation or anything for that matter. I'm just putting it or relating it to your basic, uh, you know, software uh, fundamentals. So if you use record.create, it's going to consume 10 units. It's a consumption. Yeah, okay. Is it still clear or? Uh... Yes, it's clear. No, no. If you have any questions, you can ask 10 times. That's okay. But I'm, let, I'm, I'm, I'm with, my, with my next part, you will understand. I'll tell you. Okay. So let's say the record.create will consume 10 units. Record.save will consume 20 units. So every API you use has a governance limit defined. There are certain APIs which does not use anything. There are, there are APIs like that also. Okay. Okay. Now, then second thing which comes into picture is governance limit. Now, every script you use, Okay. In okay. it has a limit defined. Clear? So every script, let's say if I use user event script, user event script has a governance limit of thousand units. Okay. So if you are using a NetSuite uh, user event script and your entire logic, and if there's a loop also, right? Let's say if you're using a user event script and then you have you have a loop also inside and then you in, inside loop, you have let's say 15 records or 20 records, or hundred records for that matter. So this entire execution of one run, like you run that record, it goes through the loop, performs all the action on all the records and then comes to an end. This entire execution should happen within thousand limits, thousand units. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah. For the user, it goes script beyond for user event script, right? So if it goes okay. beyond thousand, then it will get, your script execution will end there. You'll get an error that you know exceeds the governance, exceeds the uh, it exceeds the user lim user limit defined, and then your script execution will end there. Now, the okay. the entire reason is to uh, the entire concept behind behind this governance logic is to make any custom solution optimized. right if if there is no, you know can think about it like if there is no governance logic if there is no limitation you write any script you don't care about optimization you don't care about performance you don't care about anything right i'm yes, i'm saying yes. i'm saying if there is no if there is no limit you can write anything right and then it will keep on executing and the performance will be impacted obviously at the end it is all about performance right that is the reason this governance concept is introduced every single api you use has a user limit and every script you write has a limit defined so you have to use your apis and your logic in in an optimized way so that you don't go beyond that limit now 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 here comes the uh, challenge right let's say you know you have to do uh, uh, you have to do lot of data changes or you have to do lot of update uh, in multiple records let's say you have let's say you have 1000 records and you have to do um, you know data update or any update in 1000 records and you know user event has only 1000 units right you can't use user event in this case right in this case we will go for a script which has higher uh, governance limit let's say schedule script schedule script has 10000 units we will go for schedule script in 10000 units in this case because you are you already know your data volume is high uh, correct yes 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 this is one this is one scenario where you have where you understand what script type to use based on the based on the complexity of the problem or based on the data volume i'm just giving an example obviously you, when we talk about every single script type you will understand don't worry don't get too uh, you know uh, too uh, confused but i'm just giving you an example so this is what governance usage and limit is and any questions about governance okay, no 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 okay. this is just a number don't worry about it don't worry too much about it you just have to make sure that you don't go beyond that number when you write a script that's it okay okay yeah uh, so we covered about governance script practices the script governance limit for all scripts i mean i I'll, when we cover every script type i'll tell you what is the governance limit for every script but for example you know that user event has 1000 right yes yes for user event 1000 yeah 1000 Yeah, so we, every script type we understand. We will talk about every script type separately. Yeah. 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 Y